listening to Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, Naomi Slater, and you have tuned in to Divine Couples, adding intimacy, passion, and healing to your lives. Solomon Balour is a sex and intimacy coach for men and couples. He weaves Neo-Tantra and NLP techniques to support his clients transform their lives living an empowered life and spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Hey, Solomon, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Noemi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so this is uh, part two. Um, and in the last interview, we talked about your work as a sex and intimacy coach and some of the details surrounding men's sexuality. And I know that you are also an NLP practitioner and you use these tools in your work. Can you explain to us what NLP is? Yeah, uh, basically, I mean, so NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And basically, the easiest way to sort of, in a nutshell, give you what NLP is, is um, about 20 or so more years ago, um, these amazing people uh, decided that, hey, we want to learn how does uh, how does a therapist, for instance, a really good therapist, how, what are they doing to take their clients from A to Z and really give them success? So that's basically what they did. They just went around. They found a few amazing therapists seeing where they saw that they were getting actual results for their clients, and they just modeled it. So all NLP is, is they've just gone to different areas of, and taken techniques and really, really just um, said, okay, cool. If I want to do this to my client, uh, these are the these are the steps. If I want to do this, these are the steps. And so they basically now just called it NLP, but it's a whole bunch of different techniques that really supports a client to be able to transform their life. Wow, that sounds fantastic. And I know that you lead breakthrough sessions using tools from NLP um, that help people release emotions and limiting beliefs. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so it's a technique called mental emotional release. Uh, it comes from the Empowerment Inc. organization out of Hawaii. And basically, mental emotional release is um, basically where I take them through a process where it's sort of like a, a hypnosis process where they close their eyes and I take them to the sort of resulting emotion that happened um, in the past generally. And sort of then what with sort of like the mind helps us to sort of knock out the emotion con uh, on the unconscious level. So it's, it's a process that I take them through. And basically the, the breakthrough session is a two day, six, about six to eight hour um, sort of session where we really dismantle any emotions, limiting beliefs, ideas that you have on an area of life. And specifically, my area of life is personal growth and relationships. Mm. And you do that in group settings, right? I do not. That That is currently doing one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, the okay. breakthrough session is done one-on-one -on -one because it's okay. a six. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure because I was going to say that's probably going to be really uh, difficult to do in a group. It makes more sense to me that you would do it actually individually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. And what kind of stuff comes up for people when you do those sessions? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the thing that actually happens, so the, the, the beginning point of a breakthrough session is there's about 15 questions, right? And that's that's why it's a six to eight hour session, because the first maybe three to four hours alone is just me digging to bring up and lighting up the baggage that they've either hidden unconsciously, not known that it's there uh, or not not have have had anybody else to share this with. So mm -hmm. the baggage comes up, we light it up and then I let you sit in it overnight. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the reason that we're allowing you to sit in it overnight is because we really want you to recognize that this has this has been sitting in you. Yeah. Right. Um, and then once they come back the next day, um, then we'll move into the mental emotional release, where 
whatever emotions that have come up will release, whatever limiting beliefs, anything that you've held, like any of those charges that you've held in your body will release those. Mm. Wow. Everybody needs to do this for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and so to answer your question as to what things have a lot of people come up with is I'm not, a lot of it is sort of the basis is I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. Um, people don't care about me. Um, I'm not worthy. That's, mm. that's sort of the main um, underlying stories that we're all playing out. And <laughs> once we release those in different areas of our life, like for me, like it's, it's literally, I've done this, I've done, um, I've received the breakthrough session, four breakthrough sessions and it's transformed my life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, you're also a sex coach, of course, and I'm curious as to how you find that our emotional world is connected to our sexuality. How does it affect our sexuality? Um, it's part of, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the part of our, it's the one of our, the basis of our disconnection mm -hmm. um, or fear or whatever it could be. So if I am in a partnership and I'm not willing to be vulnerable with my partner because for instance, a fear of, Oh, if I say this, they're not going to love me against, again, it's that basis of I'm not lovable. Mm. And so if I, then what happens is fear comes in, I don't share it. I, I suppress it. And I have this story that's going to continue playing out with this partner that I've sort of withheld, withheld in information. So not only do I not feel intimate with them anymore, I become more distant mm -hmm. and, which leads to not having a good sex life, which just takes you down the rabbit hole. Right. Totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I totally know from also my own experience in doing emotional alchemy and release work that, um, you know, emotions are so connected to our ability to be open sexually and intimate with our partners. So if we're repressing all sorts of emotions, um, then, you know, we're just going to be distant. We're not, we're not going to be present in our lovemaking. We're not really going to be able to connect deeply to, uh, the person, you know, in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah. So how does emotional release work turn into something practical that changes behavior? That's a good question. So one of the practices that my previous partner and I were doing was, um, we called it embodied, uh, experience embodiment experience and basically what it was is uh, we each took 15 minutes and we would literally stand in front of each other and uh, express whatever was coming up whether it's a sound a verbal a dance uh, a grievance anger whatever it was that was personal to us we would express in front of that person and I think what that led us to be able to do was to not hold and I think that's what happens is if if we're not expressing an emotion, uh, using our voice to say something, what we're doing is we're holding that tension in our body, mm -hmm. right? And not allowing that, that connection of sexuality or that connection of closeness to ourselves and another person uh, be there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you're holding that tension in your body, the energy can't flow. You know, the sexual energy is not... It's not going to move. It's just going to, you're just going to be like a, you know, this kind of dead fish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> Trying so, to think of the right word. That's just what came out. Um, but yeah, if you want to be alive and passionate and, and you know, um, if you want your energy to flow, you have to, you have to allow your emotions to flow. And part of that is communicating your emotions. Hmm. And, and a lot of us, like for me, the, the, so a lot of, so I, I think that there's a whole idea about, oh yeah, happy emotions. Like, oh, I want to feel joyful and mix and da, 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 right. And I'm like, no, the juice <laughs> is actually in the, the anger, the sadness, the pain, the hurt, like that's yes. what, if you're not feeling those feelings, you're not allowing yourself to feel the other side either. It's just an equal balance. Yeah. As much as you allow okay. yourself to feel the sort of not so good feelings is exactly in proportion to how much you're feeling the good feelings. Yes. It's duality. This yes. is, uh, this is just how it works. <laughs> we, <laughs> we didn't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> yeah. I know that for me, um, 
releasing anger was a big one that I, I had some pent up anger uh, inside of me that uh, was definitely affecting my ability to just be my my authentic self and live a healthy and happy life. And until I really started working deeply with that, even just recognizing it, you know, I, I didn't even realize it was there to be perfectly honest. And um, when I started working with it, I really, really transformed my life. Amazing. Yeah. So is there a dominant emotion that people repress, you think, that prevents them from creating deep, deep intimacy? I know for me, it was it was really anger. Um, what else do you see? Good one. I, I think no, I think. Yeah, I mean, the, the thought that came to my mind right away when you said that is. So I believe in I believe in a higher source, um, God. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my life transformed when I realized that how much I had anger towards uh, God, goddess. Um, I mean, there it's one and the same thing, but I just like to emphasize that God and goddess that until I was able to release my anger towards that, that thing that I hold so true that I wasn't mm. able to really feel sort of uh, sovereign in my own being, knowing that it's that, that being is there, that, that thing or that energy, that, that source is there and it's always been there and it's always going to love me. And until I, I was able to release my anger for like losing my father at nine, like, Mm. making me the way that I am and all the stories that I had about unworthiness and not enoughness until I was able to release my anger towards the God and goddess. I was, yeah, I was, I was lost in some ways. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And, you know, did you release that anger through doing this deep emotional work? It was, it was many, many fold. I think one of them was the emotional work. Uh, I'd say the, the powerful thing is visualization, right? I think the power of our mind is we have, yeah, our, our mind is so powerful. Like again, visualization is so powerful. Like I literally had a coach walk me through literally visualizing doing anything and everything that I could think about hmm. with, with my mind to God, the God and goddess. Like I strangled, I killed, I, yeah, you know, beat them. I did everything and anything that I could in my mind's eye. And in, and it was a visceral feeling in my body as mm -hmm. to, wow, I actually released whatever tension was in my body doing it through my mind. Yeah, that sounds really powerful. Um, and I did, I did some, some similar things. Um, but I think that I think a lot of people think that these emotions are not legitimate, which is why they get so repressed. You know, anger is like it's kind of considered to be this emotion that people prefer to bypass because, um, you know, they, they try to rationalize it. You know, well, I shouldn't be angry because this person, you know, they 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 didn't really want to, you know, do this. They they weren't thinking straight and they didn't. And then what happens is, is they just essentially internalize that emotion. They swallow it and then that affects them mentally, physically. Um, and, and they carry that through, you know, through their lives. Yeah. Um, do you do you experience that people don't don't really allow themselves to feel these negative emotions they feel like they're just not okay yeah absolutely when it when it comes to anger i think we have a we have this idea that what anger what we see as anger isn't really it's externalized anger towards someone that's what we see and that and then when we see that we're like oh that's wrong and it's like i don't want to use the word right or wrong that's not a that's not a a, a right approach to releasing your anger Right. Mm -hmm. Pointing it towards someone and doing it towards someone is not the, the way to go about it. Releasing anger is just about it's just like an, an emo, any 